Hi, today I'm going to show you how to create your very own embeddable chatbot widget using Python and Streamlit um, and also Grok. Um, so we're going to be use, using Grok's API, which is free. Um, we're going to be using Llama Cloud, um, which is free. Um, and like I mentioned, Grok Cloud. So we're going to get an API there. It's free. And then we're going to create a super base um, database which is also going to be on the free tier and then finally we're going to publish that to Streamlit all of this free not costing a cent uh, depending of course on the usage and the limits for the respective services so anyway just to show you what this looks like um, if I ask a question to something related to the data that I've trained this on it will go through the vector database and respond with a relevant answer so I've asked it here how much does Jennifer cost which is one of the products here on my webpage and it's responding um, with the correct information. It's saying that it's three thousand New Zealand dollars per year, but if it's combined with Solid FA, the cost is five thousand dollars per year. It's also adding this little history here. So when I start adding more questions here, so let's say list the features of Gen FA um, and see what it responds to. It'll update the output text box here, and it's also gonna add it to the chat history that we've got here at the top. So um, nothing super amazing but it's very functional and it's working with the data that it's been trained on so let's have a look at how we can create this widget in streamlit using python and then embed it in any website or any page you'll see as i move my pages my chat widget remains and i can access it and start communicating with it um, in any website any existing website right so the first step is heading over to the github page so the links will be in the description here but once you access it i did add a pretty comprehensive readme and instruction list here on things that you have to do but i'll talk you through it real quick so that you can get there quite easily so the first thing to do is to clone the repository so just clone this onto your local device or clone um, create a fork of the github repository if you like um, and then you need to go and obtain an API key from Llama Parse. So there's a link there. If you head over to Llama Cloud, you can create an API key. It's free. It doesn't cost anything. So it should be pretty straightforward. Then the next thing you want to do is go to the Grok Cloud and obtain an API key there. Again, this is free. So just set that up and get the key and store it somewhere um, so that we can use it in the code. Then the next step to create the Superbase database is a little bit more complex but still easy enough to follow so the first thing you need to do is head over to superbase and create an account if you don't already have one then if you scroll down a bit in the readme you'll see there is the superbase sql steps the first thing we need to do in superbase is to create a new table but this table is going to create is going to add this vector column to which we need to create this extension so when you head over to superbase um, I'll just head over here and you'll see that I've already created my database called BIMWorks Bob. Um, if you don't have one yet, you can just create a new one, um, a new table. So if we then head over to the SQL editor, all you need to do is to copy this first set of code in here. So you copy it in there and then you run it. I've already done this, so I don't want to do it again. Um, as it might affect my existing tables, but you would just run that when it's done It should say zero rows added and completed successfully when that's done You can use the second part here copy this and repeat the same steps and this is going to create the table called document embeddings for you and Once that is done if we head over here, you'll see we've got um, If I go to my table editor, we've got documents and documents embedding so you need to um, decide the name that you're going to use the first one I created here is empty then I went ahead again and created another one called documents you'll see it's populated with data yours will be empty at this stage so I'll talk you through on how we're going to populate the data but before we do that we also need to create a function called match documents which is what we're going to be calling from the python script um, to query the database and this is the code so again once you've created the table you again go to the SQL editor and you copy and paste this code in there and you run it right so if we go here to the database and we look at the database tab and we go to functions we'll see if we scroll down we should find that match documents function that has been added here I've got two of them because I've been playing around with some different functions so I renamed one of them to match documents underscore P 
just so that I don't have uh, conflicting function names. Right, so that's the one part. The other thing that you might want to do, is, or not might want to do, that you have to do, is to be able to access the um, API keys, which is another step here. So in the step where we say obtain the Superbase database API and auth keys, um, you will find it over here. So if we head to the home tab here, and we then go to project settings and we go to API, you will find the project URL, which is this one here. You can copy that and put it somewhere in your clipboard. And you also find the project API key, which is this one over here. Again, paste that or put it in a clipboard or some temporary location so that we can use it within the code. Right. Then the next step is to prepare the training data. Um, I'm using a PDF and I'll talk you a bit through that in a second that we have placed in the data folder. So there's a, a data folder here in the root and we place the PDF in there so that we can um, create the vector store from it. Then we need to update the API keys and the training references and then we're going to run the training script. Once that's done, we can deploy this to Streamlit using the app.py and then we, once that's running and we've tested it, we can insert the widget into an existing web page using the code here at the bottom um, of the readme um, section for existing web page insertion. Right, so let's have a quick look at the code. So let's say that we have finished the steps of obtaining the Llama Cloud API key, the Grog API key, and we have retrieved our API keys and project URL from Superbase. Once we've got all of that, what you need to do is to head into the train.py and in here you would you would see that I've just added a temporary placeholder there, but you can um, either enter your Superbase URL key and um, URL and the key directly in here, but make sure to keep it secret and don't share it online. Or you can create a client secret in when you're using Streamlit, which I'll explain in a second. So in the train, um, you also need to update the API key for Llama Parse. So you would insert it there. Or again, if you're using secrets, then just make sure that you reference that secret in there. The next thing you might want to change is the name of your PDF with your training data. And I just want to show you what that looks like. My training data is called webcontent.pdf and it's just a text document, which is a summary extraction of all the information on my website based on my product information, functionality, capability, pricing, and some additional um, information that I want to be able to be um, captured through the training process. So once that is all set up and referenced, you can then go ahead and run this. You don't have to do this in Streamlit. I just run this locally on my machine. So I've got it set up here. And if I just head over to my train by, you'll see all of the code is in here. And we just run that straight in the, um, the terminal. So once all of that is done, you should, if you head back to your Superbase project and we look at the table editor for that um, table, then you should see something similar to what I've got on the screen here. So you should see the ID column, the content column, the metadata, and the embedding um, columns populated with information. So assuming that that's all set up and working, we can head over and go uh, look at the app.py, which is the Streamlit app that we'll be running. So in here, you can see that I'm using the secrets that I've set up in um, Streamlit, which I'll show you in a second. Um, instead of directly entering the API keys as a static string value here, we're using the secrets. And I've got one here for my Grok API key, and this is being retrieved from the Grok Cloud website. Um, once all of that is set up, the next thing I do here is we need to set up the chat model. So we're using Llama 3, the 70 billion parameter one. You can also use the mixed role ones. Uh, it's really up to you, whatever um, your preferences are. Then in my prompt template, I just kind of explain or, or specify the persona of the AI chatbot. In my case, it's an assistant for Bimworks, and I'm telling it to avoid certain responses and um, phrases in the responses and telling it not to make up answers, rather say it's not sure when um, it's, it's not sure about a question. Um, and that's pretty much it. Also, um, I'm using some um, formatting in my display. So you'll see when I open up my chatbot, I've got a logo there. Um, there's some um, CSS formatting that I use to just, uh, uh, you know, make the style a little bit better. And you can customize that. So of course, I'm using an image 
there in my title from my website. You can adjust that to suit and you can set the title of your chatbot um, as well as the subtitle that we've got here. So you can customize this a little bit to suit your specific needs. But once all of this is set up, you should be able to deploy this to Streamlit. So I've already done this, of course. Um, and once you've added, when you create your app, you can connect it straight to your GitHub project, which I've already done. Um, so when that is set up, the first thing you want to do is go to your settings and you want to go to secrets. In secrets, I've already set up my Grog API key. I've already set up my Superbase URL and my Superbase keys and anything else that you might require here. And if we head back to the code here, you'll see that in my loader, so this is the loader that loads the data from Superbase. We are referring to that Superbase um, URL and the Superbase key from the Streamlit secrets. All right. Um, that's all you really have to do in the loader. So this will load the information from that um, database table that we've set up. So in my case, I called it that function match documents underscore P and the table name is documents. So again, if we head back here to the Superbase, we've got the table name documents. Um, and as I showed you before, we've got the function there called match documents underscore P. And that is what we will be calling every time we launch app.py because in the app.py, you can see that we are loading the load from the load um, function. We're calling the load retriever. And if we go to load again, so this is the load function, then we've got the load retriever that we're calling there. And this is what it is using to load into the app.py so that we are loading that context data. Um, and that's pretty much it. So once you've set all of this up, you can give it a test so you can launch it here in Streamlit and we'll just have a look, see what that looks like. So we can see everything is running and we can just ask it a test question to see if it responds the way we expect it to. Um, and there we go. Everything running perfectly fine. That's good. So now we are ready to get to the next step. So if we just go back here to the readme, now that is deployed and running, the final step is insert the CSS and the iframe into an existing HTML web page. And I'm going to show you what you need to do there. So down here in the readme in this section, we've got the CSS. So this is just a style that I've set up. Now your web page uh, may already contain styles and in, in your style tag. So if it does, just add this to it. If not, then just copy and paste this entire style tag and place it in the header section of your existing web page. Once you've done that, add the HTML to the body. So I place mine at the bottom of my um, HTML body. It doesn't really matter that much, um, but I place it just at the bottom of my body above my footer. If you have a footer in your HTML, and I'll show you what that looks like. Right, so here we've got my index.html. So of course, if I wanna see it in multiple pages, like I do here, if I go to my home page, you can see the chatbot is there. If I go to um, my solid FEA page, you'll see it's still there. So in every page, it is visible, which means I have to do this for all the pages that I wanna see this in. But in my header tag, if I scroll down a bit, you'll see that I've added the styles there. Um, I've got some external styles that I reference in here as well. So I've somewhere here referencing a CSS file, um, but you don't have to worry about that. Either add it to your existing style tag or just copy and paste the whole tag in there if you don't. Then in the body of my HTML page, um, at the bottom, just above my footer, I have placed this section here for the chat widget. So if we go back here, you'll see that's the HTML body text here um, or code. So you can just copy that and paste that in. And once that is done, um, refresh, refresh your web page and you should see your assistant running directly in it and it should be working fine. So if we ask it how much does Genevieve cost and uh, we should be able to get a response from that. So there we can see it's been added and if we add, ask it another question, let's say we want to list the features of one of the particular products, Genevieve, it should run through and start um, responding and if we go to the history tab, we can see the history there. Now, this is very basic and the functionality is limited. And of course, you're going to see this branding here built with Streamlit. Um, if you wanted to customize this more, um, there are some customizations that you can add to this. But if you want to go further, and probably my next step is to build this out into a full um, Next.js widget, which will have a lot more customization and functionality. But this is quite easy and straightforward to set up. And hopefully that helps you to get there. Thanks for watching. Hit the like button, subscribe and share. Cheers. Bye.